following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. This lecture is going to be related with the consciousness as well, from the Kabbalistic point of view. The different terms for psyche, consciousness, or soul in Kabbalah receive different names. We are going to mention them to clarify different aspects in relation with Kabbalah that, as you know, means to receive. And indeed, the consciousness is that element that receives. And we have to learn how to receive. Of course, there are many degrees related with the soul, with the consciousness. We are going to <clears throat> begin by remembering Master Jesus in the Gnostic Bible. It is written in the great, and Jesus, the great Gnostic priest, chanted a delightful name. A song, yeah, and pronounce the profoundly sacred name, Yehu. And said, to his disciples, look above, you are now clairvoyant. Then the disciples looked to where Jesus was pointing and saw a profoundly mighty light that no human being in the world can describe. So that mighty light is in relation, of course, with his word, Yehu, which is also written like this sometimes. But in Hebrew is Yod He Vav, which is with Yehu, which is also related to well, what the Zohar says, Yehi. Shimon bar Hohai says that Yehi is the divine light. And that word Yehi appears in the book of Genesis several times. Every time that God is going to make or do something, he says Yehi. Uh, let there be light. Yehi or. Of course, or is light, but Yehi is the divine light. 
So in order to make light, we had to take the divine light. And uh, when Moses went up to the Mount Sinai to have experience of God, facing God face to face, and he asked the name of God, so to God, what is your name, in order to tell the people down there in the world, and then God said, Yehei, Asher, Yehei. He pronounced that mantra again, related, of course, with clairvoyance. If you look in the dictionary, this Yehi or Yehei ye means uh, I becomes, who becomes. Becoming is precisely, we will say, the meaning of that light. That light that is always active. So, when go back into Jesus and his disciples, when he is addressing them and says, look above, but he pronounced first the word Yehu. You, you are not clairvoyant. And they saw this mighty light. Of course, when we look above, you see, it's not above in heaven, but in our brain. When we look like this, we make our eyes cross. We look precisely here. In the root of our nose, is the atom of the Father that we call Keter. Keter means crowned. So, in order to see that light of the coming, which is precisely Keter, we had to use our clairvoyant eye, like this. That's why, in order to see that light, you have to close your eyes and see here what you have to see. Obviously, with a clairvoyant eye, you don't see the physical light. But the light of what we call the spiritual sun, as you end. That spiritual sun is related with this first three Sephiroth, Keter, Chorma, Bina, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, at different names and different religions. And the Ains of All is above Keter, is the very source of light, that is spiritual light that Jesus mentioned there in, Gnostic, in the Gnostic Bible and that Moses saw in the top of the Mount Sinai. Obviously, he was not physically in that mount, but in the superior dimensions. This light is synthesized with four letters that we always mention Yod, He, Vav, He. The sacred name of the Logos. Yehu are these first ones. This is how you pronounce it. You can pronounce it Yehu, Jehu. And this He, this repeated one, which is at the end, points at the ends of all. That's why it is written that God has four letters. Because he's pointing at the light. The solar light, the logos. It's not a person. Or they are not 
persons, but forces of the same light. That's why uh, when we want to see that light, we have to understand that it descends from above into our physicality, which is Malkut, the very last sephira or the tree of life. So in our physicality, that father is here in between the eyebrows, an atom of light. When we say atom, we are referring to the small particle of light here. Everybody has it. The magnetic center of the root of the nose. A little bit inside the brain, we have the pituitary gland. In that land, we have an atom of light of the sun. This is called Christ. Christ the sun. And even beyond to the center of the brain, we have the pineal gland. And we have there the atom of the Holy Spirit. So in our brain, in our head, we have those elements that we need in order to see the light. The truth is to put them into activity. That's why meditation, the remembering of ourself, always put in activity these three atoms. Moreover, these three aspects Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Okete, Chokmah, Bina, are related with the two brains, the two hemispheres. One is Bina and the other is Chokmah in our physicality. And on top, we have that light, which is a crown, which is Keter. That way also we can see the Trinity in relation with ourselves, physically speaking. Because each one of us is, is always in contact with that divine light. Or we are, as we said, channeling that light, but unconsciously. Because in order to see it, we have to see it with this eyes which are the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, and this magnetic center. As you see, I'm talking about the Ajna chakra and the Sahasahara chakra and other chakras that are in the brain which are connected with that. This is how we see what Master Samael on the earth is, uh, talks about the spiritual sun, S-U-N, that guides the initiate in the internal planes. We need to see that. That is Christ. That light appears internally when we are having experiences and depending on how we see the sun in the astral plane, in dreams, is what that sun is telling us in relation with our own development. So that is the light that Master Jesus mentioned there in, in the Gnostic Bible about Yehu, related to the Trinity. Of course, there are many Yehus in heaven as human beings on the earth because that is our own particular ray. You hear about the Glorian, right? That is a particular ray that belongs to our own particular monad that emanated from the absolute. That ray is precisely the aims of all. Every one of us has that ray of light, which belongs, of course, to any of the seven uh, rays of creation. 
that uh, we may were mentioning yesterday, but somebody asked about the ray of creation or the ray to which we are connected. Each one has that ray. But that ray is connected to certain logos. So, in the Hebrew, you discover, for instance, that the letter G or I, as we see here, belongs to the this letter Yod. So we can say, for instance, Jehu or Jehu, and we can say also the word Jehuda. Jehuda is a name in Hebrew for Judah, the tribe of Judah, from which the word Jew comes from. Judah relates to the solar light. That's why when you talk about Jehuda or Judah or Jews, we're talking about the solar light, that spiritual light. That's why the book of Revelation says, I don't remember in which uh, chapter, but it's maybe first or second, those who call the same Jews, who call themselves that they are Jews and they are liars. Because to call yourself a Jew means that you are channeling that light. Because that is Christ. And there is another interesting word related with Yehuda. If you use the word Yehi, which the Sohar says is divine light, instead of Yehuda, you said Yehida. Yehida means unity. We talk about unity in many lectures. We say that monas from Greek relate to the monad, which is our unity, our own particular divine essence. Well, in Hebrew, is Yehida. We refer to that unity. That unity, Yehida, is related to Yehuda. All the parts of Jehu, which indeed is all the tree of life. The first world that appears in the universe is precisely that light that in many lectures we always point is the world of Atziluth the wall of splendors, archetypes. Yesterday we were mentioning that the word Tiferet means beauty, but also means splendor. So when we say the world of splendors, we are related to the psyche, we are the pure essence of the psyche. That's why you find in the tree of Life that Tiferet is represented by the sun, S U N, because it's a splendor in each one of us. It's our own consciousness. But that is just a spot of light coming from Yehida, which is the unity of the light. That Yehida is precisely what we call in Greek Christ. Is not a person. It's an infinite light. When that light appears physically, and then we see the sun, the stars, our, the center of our solar system is a physical body of one of those spiritual suns. And that's why in the sun, physically speaking, is a second type of sun that channels that spiritual light. There is another third type of sun 
that channels that light too. In that we call it planet. A planet Earth is another sun, a third type, that eventually with evolution, we will say, for not having another word to say it, will appear in the future cosmic days as a radiant sun if all of us here attain self-realization in all this humanity in the world. Because if we go to the sun, the center of the solar system, we find, of course, solar men. They don't find people like here. We did fit spices. All of them are perfect. That's why the sun is sun, a second type of sun. But our planet is a third type of sun that is in process of perfection. So it had to pass through many processes, maybe many cosmic days until finally becoming a radiant sun like the central sun of our solar system. And all of us are responsible for that. That's why we had to attain that civilization, development. <coughs> so that's why in the world of Yehida, you don't find Klipot. This world of Klipot that you find here down in the world of Yehida, or Atsiluth, as we say, it doesn't exist. Only exist 13 attributes of mercy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sephiroth, plus three parts of the absolute are 13. And all of that is reflected in the aura or what we call the engine of days, the father of all delights. That in order to have an experience with that part of your being, because each one of us has his own particular engine of days. And he has these 13 attributes, which are called the 13 attributes of mercy that we need to develop in us. But that in that world that we call Yehida, the first soul that you mentioned in Kabbalah, is Yehida. It's there. In that Yehida, all the Keters, the crowns, all of the elements that we call God are one. That's what is called unity. There is no separativity there. All rays are forming one body of light that we call Christ. In Kabbalah, in Hebrew, they call it Messiah. Messiah. If you observe in that name is the Mem and the Shin. Two special words or letters, Mem and Shin. Together form Shem. You know the word Shemit or Semit? Are the two words? If somebody tells you you are anti-Semitic, -Semith, or Shem means that you are against your own, your own light. It has nothing to do with the physical world. Those who doesn't work with their own light are anti-Semitic, spiritually speaking, because they don't care about that light. Of course, in this physical world exists a race that was formed in the Atlantean epoch, Semitic. That is the origin of this Aryan race. But we are not going to talk about that right now. So anyhow, 
So this Yehida with the 13 attributes of mercy is what we call the Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. That wants to descend in each one of us. It's what we call the Savior. In the Zohar, Shimon ben Hohai asked Eliah, the prophet, who is always next to him, teaching the Kabbalah, when is the Messiah going to come? And then he said to Shimon, tomorrow, go to the marketplace in the town and you will see him. So Shimon ben Hohai he said that went there, he stood all day and he, he didn't see anything special, anybody special. Only beggars asking for alms and people helping them in different ways. This is it. And then the next day he talked with Elijah the prophet and says, you were mocking me because I was all day there and I didn't see the Messiah. Didn't you see people performing mercy for others? He yes, has well, wherever you see people performing mercy, compassion, there is the kingdom of Messiah. It's what the Master Samael calls sacrifice for humanity. The way that we had to give. Because each one of us has a light. That light only acts in us if we give. If we are selfish, that light, it doesn't work through us. Because that uh, is the light of compassion, of Yehida, the monad. So in other words, our own particular monad, our own particular ray, in that light, is one with the Lord. If you meditate and you enter into that light, if you are concentrated in Jesus of Nazareth, you will see that you are Jesus of Nazareth. And then that light will take you to the past 2,000 years ago, performing miracles. And if you don't know that in that Yehida everything is a unity, you will return of your ecstasy, your samadhi, and thinking, oh, I didn't know that I was the reincarnation of Jesus. Falling into a big mistake. And uh, wherever master that reached Christi uh, Christification, Mohammed, Moses, Buddha, Jesus, if you concentrate on any one of them, you will become them because your consciousness will become one with your own particular ray, your Yehida, your Glorian. And this is how you can discover if certain master says, I am a crucified one. I crucified myself in this in past life, whatever. Then you just sit down and concentrate and pray to your inner God. Connect me, please, to this master. And then you will see if the one that is saying that is lying or saying the truth. This is how you discover, but through meditation. Because that's the world of Christ. Of course, that light, as you see here, shines there in the space, utilizing our sun. In the solar, the solar system, and he is giving his light to all the planets. But each planet, in the very core, there is also a being that is crucified, who utilizes this physical body, this physical planet, as a vehicle. And from the center of the Earth, is also irradiating. If you see the planet Earth in the space, it has a beautiful blue color, splendor. That's why Tiferet is called beauty, because the beauty that we are talking about here is not physical beauty. It's uh, the beauty related with the light. When it says splendor, you imagine light. 
and that is the breath. When the consciousness is free of ego, it's a splendor, it's light, which becomes one with all the lights. And that is precisely the, the mystery of uh, Yehida. And we are in contact with it. You know, the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom, human kingdom, needs the solar light in order to be alive. And that's precisely what uh, in the Bible is called, we need the Salem, the Salem in different levels. Salem, I'm writing here with Roman letters, no Hebrew, in order for you to understand easily. The letter T in combination with the letter Z or Zeta is the letter Zade, Zade in, in Hebrew. I believe the letter Zade is like this. The second letter of the word Salem is Lamed. And the last one is the letter Mem. Only three letters. Salem. This word Salem means image. Image. So when you read that the human being was made into the image of God, and we are starting here, Yehida, in the light, the unity. When you see uh, yourself, it says, am I made into the image of God? It's obviously, the answer is no. It's pretty obvious. You don't even know where the light was. So how are we going to reflect that light image? And this is precisely how the Bible describes a process of the light. Because God is light. This is what Jesus said in the Bible. I am the light of the world. But the one that was talking through him was that light. Because he was the channel of that light. Or the vehicle of that light. Because he was crucified. So you see there then that the Salem is precisely that element that image, Christ, that is everywhere, giving life, not only to the human kingdom, animal kingdom, plant kingdom. That's why Matthew Samael on the earth says, Christ is everywhere. He's in the water, he's in the air, he's in the earth, he's in the fire, surround us. But we have to understand that. We eat that. This is a process of destruction and being born, of birth and destruction. When we eat something, we destroy it and we liberate that light into us, which is called vitamins. Or how they say in other language, vitamins. The same, right? It is on a light that feeds our bodies. So, the Salem, we need it. Without Christ, there is no way that we can self-realize our being. The Lord says, through the lips of Master Jesus, I am the way. I am the life. I am the light. Referencing, of course, to that I am. That... Uh, because that yehi ye, ye, is translated as I am the one that I am. Because they're referring to that. Because in Hebrew you can say also in that way to be. But the real meaning is to become. Because that light is always an eternal becoming. Keter, the ancient of days. That inner 
most beautiful part of us inside is always receiving. You see, Kabbalah is always receiving the light from the Absolute. And giving it to the universe. So takes from the abstract light and gives to the universe. And that's an eternal becoming. There always is a process. The light returns through him and is always given again. That, we will say, is the beginning of Kabbalah, to receive. Because in order to receive, you have to give. And of course, Kabbalists state that this word Salem is, has to be studied in each letter. The first one is... Uh, Sabar, which means to collect. And is related, of course, with our head. Here in the brain, we have to collect Sabar, the solar light. We have learning here through the lectures and through the exercises how to collect that light. Because if we do not, we are not aware or while we are receiving the impressions of the light that are always entering through the senses, which we have in the head, in the, those chakras I was mentioning, that light enters and goes away. We had to collect it, we had to hold it in order to develop it inside, spiritually. And that's precisely the point of uh, sabar to collect hmm? then it goes down into the heart as you know related with tiferet the splendor our consciousness the beauty here we have the word uh, liba means heart and uh, also lebush begins with L, both. Lebouge means clothing. In a very lower level, we need clothing in order to protect ourselves from the weather or to behave like civilized people. The clothing, of course, is made from different elements of nature where there are animals or plants. And that light is there. That's why we said always that the closest way to the light, physically speaking, is the clothing that we wear. And that's why, personally, I like to wear cotton. It makes me comfortable. But other magicians advise, for instance, if you want to meditate, do it on top of a uh, skin of uh, of a sheep. Uh, how you call wool. wool? That will you as isolate from the negative currents, right? And to give you more uh, concentration in your meditation. In other parts, they use other type of skins, like the tiger, for instance. It's very strong. In the pictures of India, you find Shiva meditating, see they always in the skin of a tiger. Depends what you want in order to acquire that. But that's the closest aspect of the light with us. Because light and fire is the same. Fire and light. Sound. Now, the letter Mem is translated as Mazan, food. Obviously, we need to eat. 
in order to be alive. So that light will sustain our bodies with the food. So the word Zalem, which means image, encloses these three aspects in order for us to understand how to gather to obtain that light in order to process that light in us. And that's precisely the mystery of the image of God. When we say the image of God, we're talking about the light. But if we just place God above there and not here, and then it's not God. Because God is everything. But if we understand that He is light, obviously in def different tonalities, that light is everywhere. But from the world of Atsiluth. So, what we eat has to be charged with light. That's why we, the Gnostics, we are against the crossbred. How do you call it? Hybrids. People that used to cross this tree with another tree, they, they interfere in the process of the light. The fruits may be beautiful, bigger, but they don't have the essence that we need in order to put the mazan, the food, inside of us. Because this is the path precisely of the self-realization. We need how to handle the senses. The type of food that we receive is very subtle. That's why here in the retreat we learn how to transform the light because ordinarily we don't do it. The only light that we process is the food that we eat. And usually we use the clothing, uh, polyester or other elements that are not in their direct contact with that Yehida, that unity. Because when you say Yehida is unity, it means that that light is the same everywhere. But you have to see where is it. And if you are going to eat uh, fruits that in this day and age are very common, adulterated, the light is not there. Because the final journey of that light is in the sexual energy. This is where we have Yehida in our sexual energy. There is another word here that is necessary to mention because we are mentioning the sexual energy here, which is the Chaya. Chaya is written with only two letters in Hebrew, Chet and Yod. Chaya. That means life. So when we talk about Chaya, we are talking about the letter Yod. But when we're talking about Yehida, we're talking about the very tip of the letter Yod. Because that very tip of the letter Yod is the one that goes into the Absolute. And from the Absolute comes and becomes Yehida. And then after that, Haya, which is represented by the duality. And that's why I said I had to mention that, because the duality is, rela is in relation with Haya. Remember very well, in the Bible is stated, when God took the woman out of Adam, that's meaning he's taking Haya out of Yod. Because Yod, that Yod is Adam Katmon, that celestial 
being, which is pure light. And that's why in many apocrypha, they said that Eve was more spiritual than Adam, in that sense. Because the word Eve in Hebrew is written like this. Chava. You just extend the letter Yod and make the letter Vav. That sounds V. Chava. And it's written there, your name should be called Chava. Well, we said in English, Eve. Because you are the mother of the living. And the living is Chaya. That's why the tree of life, which are the parts of that living entity, is called Chaim. Ot Chaim. And all the creatures that are inside that Ot Chaim are called Chayot. The same root for living entities. That's why in the invocation of Solomon, <coughs> That you might have it because in Gnostic have the invocation of Solomon. We said uh, when addressing Keter, we said Chayot, uh, Ha Kadosh, the holy creatures speak, roar, bellow, uh, cry, Kadosh, 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 three times. Because refer to these three aspects. But first we says Eheye Ashe Eheye. The same words for Keter, for the Yod, in other words. Because the letter Yod, as you see, the shape of it could be like this too. Is the first sephirah, that's called Yod. The first spot of light that appears from the unknowable divine. So that the Haya, Hayot. And of course, Kabbalistically we said Haya means Adam and Eve. But the first divine aspect of that Adam and Eve is what we call Abba and Ima, father and mother. Remember the commandment of Moses. You shall honor your father and your mother. That's above. Is what in Hinduism is called Shiva Shakti. There's a representation there in Hinduism. You have to honor Shiva Shakti. In other words, Bina, the Holy Spirit. Because that higher expresses itself through the third aspect of that Yehida. Yehida is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Haya is the Holy Spirit expressing that power of Yehida in the duality. And that is Father, Mother. Adam and Eve, in other words, in heaven the divine aspect of Adam and Eve. And uh, when we talk about that, of course, that Adam and Eve above reflects down here in the earth, in the division of sexes. I am Adam, and all of you women are Eve. All the men here are the representation of Adam. But above... This Haya is Yod Hey. And Adam and Eve here down is Vav Hey. The second name of God. Yod Hey, Vav Hey. Down. That's Haya. And we are referring and talking about that because. The 
mem, mazan, which is food, is a way that we have to eat in order to feed our consciousness. In the aspect that we know, in many lectures we explain, that that Chava, the mother of all the living, of the Hayot, Chaim, is our sexual energy, our sexual organ. So in order to feed our consciousness, we have to absorb the sexual energy. The listen in Hebrew, sexual energy begins with mem. It's called uh, min. In other words, it's min. Better to write like this, you know, for you not to get confused. M. I N, that I is letter Y, mean, the sex begins with M. There's another word that begins with M too, which is mana, which is the same. You write, for instance, mana in Hebrew uh, is written with the letter mem, like this in the letter Nun. This is Mana. Which you know Mana, what it is Mana, right? The food that were the Israelites eating in the wilderness. The food from heaven. So that food from, from heaven is the same Yehida, the same solar force descending in your body and becoming sexual energy. That's Mana. Because if you add the letter Yod here in the middle of this word, and then it says Min, which means sex, the letter Yod is pointing at Yehida. Because every time that you put the letter Yod, you immediately think Keter, which is represented by the letter Yod. And that's precisely why the letter Yod is the number 10 letter of the alphabet. Because it relates to the 10th Sephiroth. Hmm? So if you said Mana, you know what is Mana? You put the letter Yod there, all is mean, sex. Because Mana is solar energy. It comes from above. This is what crystallizing is what people were eating in the wilderness. And that is special food for the consciousness. We did that mana in order for the consciousness to grow. Are you following me? He's not too confused. All right. Let us continue because we are just talking here about two souls. Yehida and Haya, which express themselves as light and life. When we talk about life, we talk about Haya. And that Haya is not only in the physical world, I mean, in the human level, in all the levels. Because the origin of life is the intelligence. That's why B, Na, means intelligence. There are other three souls which are mentioned in Kabbalah because we will say are more simple. I think Nefesh, Ruach, Ruach. And Neshama. Ne, what is Neshama? Let us begin from above. We already talk about Nefesh in different levels. But Neshama 
if you observe, has the letter Shin and the letter Mem in between. Shem, which means the word, the name. Zone Shama is precisely that likeness, we will say, of the image that is placed in our spirit. The Father of all the lights wants to make human beings into his own image. And in order to make the beings into his own image, he puts his own likeness in the Sephira, which is called Chesed, which is called mercy. If you observe, mercy, Chesed, is the one that receives the 13 attributes of mercy. That's why he is called mercy. And that Chesed is what we call Elohim, but usually it's called El, but I said Elohim because his name is hidden. In Hebrew, in order to write Elohim, you write like this, E, I mean Aleph, El, He, I am, Elohim. El by itself means him, he said. The spirit means the being that we have inside. This chesed has or is part of Yehida, but contains in himself the neshama. Is it says is the ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim means spirit of the gods. But the word H I M spell He Yod Mem in Hebrew means the sea, the ocean, the water. Because the letter He means the I am is water, sea, ocean. So when you said El Chaim, means the God of the water. And who is this God of the water? Is the Ruach Elohim that in the beginning was hovering above the waters, which is our own spirit. Hmm? It's Chesed. In other words, our own particular Ruach. That's called Ruach highest and in him is a neshama neshama expresses this here in gebura that's why gebura is called the spiritual soul and in kabbalah we said neshama is a spiritual soul so that neshama contains all the light of yehida but not in activity. And this is precisely why we come here. We go everywhere, trying to find a way to put in activity that neshama that all of us have in the internal planes. So, where are we then? If all of us are there, where are we? Well, we are that soul, part of Neshama, that is sent down. That is called the Buddha Ratu, the essence, the consciousness that we are talking about here. <coughs> right? We want to develop. How are we going to develop all this that we are mentioning here? In which way? Well, we find the ways. Is eating 
and getting dressed. You remember the Zalem? The second letter, Lamed, means lebush, clothing. The rustic or the lower aspect of that clothing, as I said, is the clothing that you use physically. But we have to dress our soul. Because our soul needs vehicles of light in order to express itself in the astral plane, in the mental plane, in the causal plane. We have this vehicle, which is called physical body, which in the last synthesis is energy, it's light. We use it, we get sick, we have to heal it. But we need to create bodies that will be immortal because our physical body is mortal. Or as the Master Jesus said, you have to be born again. You have to be clothed. You have to wear the clothing of the light. And for that you need how to eat. You, know, you, know, you, know, you need to transmute the sexual energy. And behold here, Lamed is in relation with uh, Liva, which is heart in Hebrew, and Lebush, which means clothing, but is directly related with the heart, with Tiferet. Because in there we have the consciousness that needs to use those vestures. Right now, we have a vesture that is lunar, mechanical, that eventually we will lose. The physical body that we have eventually will become old, will die, because it doesn't belong to us. It's a gift from nature <coughs> that we have to take advantage of, because the solar light feeds it. If we don't take advantage of it, we physically die, and then if we have another opportunity, we will receive another body. But the objective of receiving physical bodies is to take advantage of that light in order to perform what we have to perform. Inside of us, we have two elements that are also lunar which is called Nefesh and Ruach, down here below. Master Samael on the or explains, he says, in order for a body to exist, he needs millions, trillions of monads that will detach from our own particular monad. Because our own spirit, we are connected to him. Every single atom in our physicality is connected to the main monad, which is our own Ruach. So we will say that our Ruach, which is Chesed, above, controls the trillions and millions of Ruachs that are controlling the life of this physical body. It's the intelligence of the physical body. But unfortunately, he is controlling lunar bodies, not solar. Like any animal, like any plant, like any mineral, receive the influence of the monads in order to survive, to be alive, but are mechanical. Nature gives this body, takes it, gives another, takes it, and that's a process. We call it the one, the ecosystem. process of destruction, annihilation, and birth. It's a natural process in nature. Inside of us, the lunar bodies comes from the mineral kingdom from a long time, far in time when we were minerals. They were developing that nefesh in 
because of the Ruach. Nefesh is that soul that is related to the physicality and also to the internal bodies that we have. Lunar. It's called in Sanskrit Kamamanas. Oh, mind of desire, which is common in the animals. But the kamamanas in the, in the plants are different. But they are kamamanas because they're lunar. And the other <coughs> is called the budimanas, related with the mind. Kamamanas, budimanas. And the rest is just the physical body that we are. It's what we are inside. Every time that we go and we come into this physical world with our physicality, we look for the doctrine, we start doing practices in order to feed our souls. And we find the path, we learn how to create solar bodies, which don't belong to the process of annihilation, destruction, that the lunar body suffers. But right now, all of us, without exception, have lunar bodies inside. And that's from where desire comes, from our mind as well, which is lunar, which is a process of nature. And unfortunately, in order to be active, they need the activity of our monad. And that's why it says that God suffers through us, because karma is involved in it. If we, if we don't do what we have to do, eventually this uh, nefesh and ruach of our lunar bodies will descend and be disintegrated in the process of klipas. In order to liberate that essence, which is part of Neshama, which is waiting there in order to put in activity the elements that we have within. That's why we come here and receive doctrine and we say you have to be born again, you have to walk with your consciousness because if you don't do it, eventually nature will take you with your lunar bodies down. Because the lunar bodies, even though have the essence of God, our own particular God there, belong to a process of nature. It was given to us when we were minerals, plants, animals, intellectual animals, and will descend in nature again. But we are trapped in them. Do you understand that? And that's precisely the type of nefesh and ruach that we have is pure animal related to the process, mechanical process, lunar process of nature. So our job is to develop that light in different steps. The first step in order for that light of Yehida to appear in the earth is to become King David. Who is a king? You find, for instance, in the Bible, different kings, right? Shaul, David, and Solomon. Those are the three main ones. The first one is mentioned, but not too much. Shaul, if you write, you see the letters of Shaul, means Sheol, means hell. Right? And it's because when we start in this work, we begin like Shaul, with our own hell. Because we belong to Klippoth. So we start transmuting desire into chastity and doing all this work of transformation of the animality that we have in order to create the man inside.
And the first one that appears is Sheol. If you read in the Bible, Sheol is trying to do his best, but has a lot of ego. If we said that, that Sheol was a Hasnamus, we will not mistake double polarity. But it is written that the Messiah is the son of David, right? And the clue is this. Whether King Solomon, King David, or King Shaul, all of them are dressed with royal vesture. With clothing of kings. And that means that they have astral solar body, mental solar body, causal solar body. Only like that you can reach Tifereth, the causal body, the world of the Malachim. This is how you said. Malachim means kings. So being a king, you enter in the world of Tifereth, and you can be anointed, as Sheol was anointed. But if you don't kill your ego, and then you will be rejected. As is written, Sheol or Saul killed 1,000, but David, his 10,000. And that implies all of your life purifying all the light. But Sheol was only here. And the Messiah cannot be a son of Sheol, but of David, that kills Goliath and keep purifying himself. That's why David was, of course, a vehicle of the Lord, like many other masters. So in Kabbalah we say, first we have to reach the level of David, because to reach the level of Sheol is easy. Well, it's not that easy, but it means because you don't need to annihilate too much ego. You need just to transform energy, etc., and reach a certain level. But in order to reach the level of David, you have to go very deep and clean yourself, your consciousness, so the Messiah can come and perform all those miracles with the power of Moses. Because Moses is Neshama. You read all the powers of Moses in the Bible, all the powers of the archetypes that he developed from here up to Bina. Moses is Neshama. And you find easy Moshe, Mem Shin, Neshama, Shin Mem. They both have the, the name Shem in, in, in them. Or as in Kabbalah, I said Baruch Hashem. Holy be the name. Holy be the name of God. That Shem is, of course, all the archetypes in synthesis. So, we will say, in this case, talking about Master Jesus, he was a living expression of Yehida. Moses was a living expression of Neshama and King David of Nefesh, purified. You see that nefesh, that is really what we call nefesh haya. Hmm? The living soul. So, in the level of ruach, which is the innermost that expresses itself through the soul, is that soul that we call Elijah. Or oh, I always said Eliyahu, the prophet. Elijah is necessary to come first because he's in relation with Ruach. He comes first in order to create all of that, those bodies inside, in order to Moses to appear. So in Tintas we say Nefesh is David, Ruach is Elijah, Neshama is Moses. Yehida is Jesus. 
because he was a vehicle, a complete master there. In Haya, of course, it's Adam and Eve, the life that we have to work with. Those are the five souls in Kabbalah that are in relation with our own development. And that's why uh, all the doctrine that we study relate precisely to those five souls. We see those souls everywhere. We have to be careful with our own nefesh, which is really with the lunar forces right now. We have to transform it into the King David. And for that, you see King David kill Goliath which are the expression of that nefesh in the animal level. And like that are processes that are written in the Bible that you see, but that you need to know the language which is written in order to see. For instance, it is written and Jehovah Elohim blew the neshama of life in the nostrils of Adam, and Adam became a living soul. What, did you read that before, or you hear that before? Well, the neshama of life is called Neshama Haya <coughs> means that in order for that Neshama Haya to develop, to be blown through the nostrils, it's in different steps. Yeah? Different steps. And that's why the science of breathing that we practice, whether we are single or we are married, because the three breaths, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descends from above through our breathing, through Ida Pingala, which are Haya, masculine and feminine, into our system and go directly into our sexual energy. So God is always blowing that Neshama, which is that part of our monad that has the principles for us to become human. Every single moment he's blowing that because that Yehirah, which is the light, when entering into us, enters according to our own particular Nishama and goes into the sex, goes into our heart, into our brain and is waiting there not for us to put that into activity. But if we are not aware, if we are not using the consciousness, all that enters and goes away. So we have to be here now to use the consciousness. Because re remember that Kabbalah means to receive. And that's precisely the basic aspect of the, this uh, lecture that we are saying, to receive is this basic action in all the levels. That's why we had to be here and now observant and transforming the light every time that we can. It is not by belonging to this group or by belonging to this other group that we are going to serve ourselves. The light is there entering. If we take advantage of it, then it will grow, develop in us according to our own activity. It's not a matter of believing. You can believe in this. If you don't do anything without light, that light remains there without illumination. That's why Tifereth is called splendor, beauty. And now you understand when a master's realize that light is shining there, splendor.
because he takes advantage of that neshama of life, neshama haya, that is being blown into the nostrils. You know the signs of breathing, you know what are we talking about, right? And Adam became a nefesh haya, a living soul. You see the word haya again there? But combined there with nefesh, a living soul. What is a living soul? A man living soul. A man being a living soul means that expresses all of those attributes of mercy in his nefesh, his physicality. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a living soul, nefesh haya, means that everything that he does or performs is related with that light. And in order to reach that level, to be a man into the image of God, it's difficult. It's a, a long work that we do and we perform with light. In the animal kingdom, for instance, Master Samael on the or was telling us, can we find an Efez Haya in the animal kingdom? Well, ex, 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 I mean, samples like that, yeah, as he says, for instance, an eagle. You see the eagle? It's an Efez Haya in itself. Because that eagle has all the qualities that are necessary in order to be an eagle. Flies. His, his level of being is higher than any one of you. That's what he said. Because he is an Efez Haya. A lion, for instance, he says, a lion is an Efez Haya. Has the attributes of being a lion. But you call themselves human beings. Are you an Efez Haya? No. You are not an Efez Haya. You have the shape of a human being. But I take one of you and put it in the middle of the Sahara Desert. It's written that the human being is a king of nature. What will you do there in the middle of the Sahara Desert? You make appear yeah, water from the sand, or to, right? And the fish high he is the one that is written, uh, control the fish of the ocean, the birds of the sea, the animals of the earth. Controls all nature, but we are just destroying all nature. To take uh, with tricks a lion and put it in a cage is easy. But to be like Daniel in the den of lions, and the lions around him, and he just being there, he's showing that he, he is really controlling those animals. What will you do, for instance, if a lion enters here right now? Can we control him? <laughs> right? An Efez Chaya, a man made to an Efez Chaya, is controlling animals. He's not be afraid. The lion will be afraid of that, Nefesh Chaya, because no, he's a living God in flesh, like Krishna, Jesus, like Moses, and Nefesh Chaya in his own level. But we are not Nefesh Chaya. That's why people say, we are made into the image of God. We are living souls. I says, oh, yes. You wish. Right? And that's precisely when we, of course, the process of these souls are even deeper and deeper. We're just touching them in the surface in order for us to understand and to give you opportunity to, to make questions. Unfortunately, yes. 
The question is, are all humanity going to clip out because it's different to become a Nefesh Chaya? Well, let me tell you, in order to reach Nefesh Chaya, a living soul, you have to reach all the levels of human beings before. The first one is King David, which is the living representation of, of Nefesh and his physicality. A king of Malkut. Malkut means the kingdom. A king that descends and cleans himself and becomes a king, but is in the process. To become an Efesh Chaya is a long process. First, we have to create astral body, at least. And then the rest, because the king is dressed with a royal dress. And that royal dress is astral, mental, and causal solar bodies. And then you become a Malachim. This process is uh, uh, written in many books. Master Samael talks about the three kings that visit uh, the manger of Bethlehem. Hmm? Same symbol. And uh, if we work hard, maybe we could become an Efesh higher. But for that, we have to take advantage of the breath of God through our nostrils, which is Neshama Haya. And it goes inside into our blood. From our blood, from our blood into the sex, which is the, the mana. We have to eat mana. We want to go to the promised land as an Efesh Haya. We have to eat mana in the wilderness. And that's the mean sex, sexual force, chastity. No fornicator can enter into the promised land. Which is the fourth dimension. When you talk about those inter symbols, does that mean in Shaka? In the what? Yeah, of course. There is a book, a Kabbalistic book written that mentions the seven chakras, which is called the Book of Revelation. Okay. That is a very strong Kabbalistic book, and it begins with it. But uh, Johannes, Yeowams, don't say chakras, he says churches. Right? Go and tell to the seven churches that are in Asia. Asya or Asa means the Malkut, the world or matter of action in when we have to put in activity the seven chakras or the seven churches. If you want to know what virtues do you need in order to put in activity the seven chakras, which are in Asa, in Asya, in your physicality, well, read the two chapters of the Book of Revelation. There you will learn, beginning with Ephesus, which is a Muladhara Chakra, Smyrna, which is a Shwaristana Chakra, Pergamos, which is a Manipura Chakra, Teatira, which is a Chakra of uh, uh, hmm? Anahata, with Sardis, which is Vishuddha, Agna, which is Philadelphia, and Laodicea, which is the chakra Sahasrara. And all of you have those there. You have those churches there. But as you see, when you go to any church, whether it's Orthodox Church, Catholic Church, or any Mesquite, or any synagogue, there is always one particular thing that is very common in all those temples, even the Hindu temples. What is that particularity which you find in all those temples? Different religions, but you always find that element there. Light. There is always candles, right? Because God is light. 
So it's what you have and what you need in those churches that you have there. Light. Knowing to enlighten them. This is what Buddha means enlightened one. Hmm? Because he has all the energy, uh, the light of Yehida in himself. Buddha in Kabbalah is Chesed. There's our own particular individual Buddha. Become enlightened because we work here, down here. That's why when we work in ourselves, we have to concentrate, we have to concentrate in our own particular Buddha, our own Chesed, our own spirit. In order for him to come and hover him above the waters and do the work that we have to do. Which is make the light. Because in the beginning, the Spirit of God was hovering above the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And that's precisely what we need. It's hovering there. The light is everywhere, it's stored in our body. We had to make light. Let there be light. How? Well, different ways. Transmutation of the sexual energy is one way. <coughs> Transformation of energies. Being in contact with nature. To see the light, how that light is everywhere. In all the elements. And to absorb that light and to transform it. And to be always in that moment. Is to be in communion with Christ, with the light. And by feeling that light in your heart, because it's what you have, Tifereth, splendor, is how you clothe yourself with the light. At least in the beginning. Because that light shines here in the heart, in your aura. So begin with being here now and remembering yourself and from that heart to, sh to shine in all your consciousness. So that light will be a clothing for your consciousness. And little by little as you advance, you will make that concrete body, which is called astral body, mental body, causal body. If you know, if you find a way to transmute your mean your mina according to your own kind this is another word you see you find in the Bible it says in accordance to their own kind kind is the same root mean mina kind meaning that you are going to build that according to your own kind according to your own sexual energy according to your own ray according to your own archetypes because each one of us has different idiosyncrasy, spiritually speaking. You read the books of the Master Samael, that is his own, his own mina, his own kind, strong master. But you can read books of other masters and are different. Because that light shines in different levels, different manners. Master Samael is a master of power. They're masters of love, for instance, Master Moria. Read uh, in the book, uh, the Spring, the Day of Spring of Youth. It's a beautiful book. But the Master Moria is another master. That light shines in different way. But teaches the same thing in different ways. Master Samael, very strong. Shakes you. It's what vibrates with me. But you have to discover your inner ray. <clears throat> yeah, the question is, is the menorah related with it? You know what is the menorah? It's a mean aura, the sexual force. Usually the menorahs have uh, oil at the bottom and the wicks are on top. You light the light flames of the seven lights of the menorah because of the, the oil that rises 
Now, of course, you will say it's just candles, but it's the same uh, meaning, right? Our, or pronounced, is light. Our, or, and mean is sex. Mean, or, minora, means the light that you take from your sexual energy, which is seven lights, seven chakras. And that's a, your own particular minora. I don't know if all the Jews know this, but when you study Kabbalah, you see very clear, minora, seven lights of the sexual force. If you are a fornicator, there is no minora there. Now, the, maybe the minora is there, but with a light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Rua Elohim is in itself the first emanation of the Trinity. Ruach means the spirit. Ruach Elohim is the spirit of God that receives the Neshama. In this sense, the Neshama is above the Ruach. Hmm? Or we will say, in other words, Ruach and Neshama in this aspect are one. It's the same monad. That's why when we mention the monad, our own particular spirit, we will say Chesed and Gebura, or in Sanskrit, Atman Buddhi, which shares the light. That Neshama is equal to ye, uh, uh, Shekinah which is the, the light of the Divine Mother. It's another word that maybe you will find. But that is Ruach and Neshama are one. So, when, um, so where on the feet, on the Kabbalah, uh, does uh, Adam appear? Yeah, that's a good question, because this Adam is Ruach. When we talk about the real man, the true man, he's not here, that is here. That is a, a real Adam. And it contains all the attributes. So in other words, that heavenly Adam exists in every one of us. But in potentiality, he contains all the attributes of God in himself. But if you don't do anything here, those attributes remain undeveloped. Now that's why the book of Genesis was written, in order to show you how this Ruach Elohim that is hovering about the waters descends in order to make light and start developing all the seven days of Genesis. It's a long work. Hmm? No, no. That is especially the, this is what we call Elijah, the prophet. It's a soul that never sings. The soul that sings is here. Different. It's different. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the word Adam uh, represents always the letter Yod. Represents the man, for instance, uh, talking in a heavenly manner. That your hair keter is called Adam Katmon, the celestial man, which is perfect. And this is the one that sends his image, in order for that image to become here a human being. But he creates first Adam in, in heaven, in his own image. And after that, in his own likeness. So we have that. Inside of us, we have that image. But not developed. We have to develop. 
That's why we come to this physical world. Why, why do you think this physical world was created with all this complication? Just to make us suffer? No, it's a purpose. Because God wants to make his own image alive, nefesh haya. And he's different in ingredients, developments. And he takes us always from the physical world. And that physical world is our physical body. If we don't take advantage of our physical body, who is going to take it? Psychologically speaking, you have to be, you have to know very well that your physicality is that vessel that is given to you in order to serve nature as a machine. And then you come and say, I am a machine transforming energy for nature. If I don't take advantage of this, nature eventually will take me down and I will be elements for plants, like in a cemetery, the matter transforming into trees and fruits. So I have to take advantage of that. And for that, I have to become a thief. All of us are thieves. Gnostics. I am a thief. I am stealing from nature. That's why the Lord Christ was crucified between two thieves. One in the left and the other in the right. Well, the one in the right was the smart one. The other in the left was just taking the energy for satisfying his animal pleasures. Utilizing the cross, the sexual act, for animal pleasure. But the one on the right says, remember me, Lord, when you are in the kingdom. You will be with me because you are a smart thief. This in the left it doesn't know how to steal. Hmm? That's why we, we were there walking or where the conscience learned how to take advantage of that. But the forces of nature that are related with the mechanicity will fight against us. And that's precisely the great... Uh, war, the fight that we have to do, and the fight is not outside, it's inside. Once we defeat our own nature, and we become King David, and then it's a long process. Yeah? the light that comes in, how do we do it in order to transform it? Yeah. First, first, what we learn today, to be aware, consciously speaking, of all the impressions that we receive through the senses and through the inner senses that eventually will develop. Because when you start doing that, your physical senses become very sharp. And with that energy entering and being aware always, then the other senses are active, the chakras. And then you have to be more aware. And that gives you the fuel in order to develop consciousness. That is the first step, transformation of impressions. When you eat as well, the food that we eat, because in this area as well, in the head, is when you put in the food that eventually will go into the stomach. That will become blood. And by the way, blood in Hebrew is dam. In the air that we breathe is the letter F. So the dam here, the blood in our heart becomes Adam. And if we are very attentive with the breath, the, the oxygen that we're breathing, and all that breath that enters through the senses, the blood is becomes purified. That is the Adam, the element that could be, could be, or will be Adam if we go from Mina, which is the sex. Because that's the food also. That's why in our lectures we advise that we have to know how to eat. 
when you are eating, you are pronouncing the mantra Krim. The mantra in Sanskrit. Krim. K-R-I-M. An easy way to understand is if you like cream, just pronounce that word there, mentally. And then you take directly the yehida, the light which is there, into your body. You steal it into your consciousness. That's why when you are eating, you have to be aware. You know, the, the way of eating is a ceremony. And Jesus taught that with the Last Supper. He's delivering the body and blood of the Lord Christ, the soul of light, to his disciples. In the, the same way, we have to be making of eating a ceremony. Here they say that they charge, and I don't know, Maybe they deliver the, the Yehida with more strength, but the Yehida is always there, the light, if the food is not adulterated. Then, of course, you pronounce cream mentally. Don't do it verbally. You will choke there. And then you feed your, your consciousness. Every time that you eat, Yeah, you eat three times a day, the three times you do it. Always when you're eating, you are pronouncing cream, cream, and you don't need to take. Of course, if you don't pronounce it well, the food will go there, but you have to, you have to eat with your consciousness. And that the energy, the sexual energy that you will build by doing that is even better. So when you go and do those sexual transmutation, the light is very potent. And that will be like a big fuel for you. That's food, mazan, food, for your consciousness. Because we're talking about the consciousness. Remember, Kabbalah means to receive. And you are receiving with your consciousness, the light, different manners, different ways. You want to retain that light in your psyche? It's a process called Kundalini where you have to create the astral body, the astral body retains that light, it becomes the body, immortal body. But it's a process of transmutation. And for that, you have to know how to save. You have to save energy. If you are a victim of your emotions, or your mind, you are not saving. You are just feeding your egos. So you have to save energy in order to steal it. What? What destroys energy? The energy is not destroyed. The energy just escapes. Energy is never destroyed. Matter transforms into energy, energy into matter. What we want is to receive, to retain the energy, in order to create other subtle matters. Because the matters that we have contain energy, but it's a very rotten matter. Egos, defects, vices. It's a transformation. It's called alchemy. Light will be always there. It's a process, an eternal becoming, as we say. Do you, yeah? Um, you mentioned the Nakitama seed, you made that the spiritual nature. What? The Nakitama seed. Yeah. No, but in, in humanity are also thieves, but bad thieves, bad thieves. They still in order to satisfy their pleasures. We have to go good thieves. Bad thief goes down. Yeah. When you are a good thief, you retain the energy. That's why, imagine, if all humanity become good thieves, and then this planet really will die. That's why self realization is difficult. Yeah. 
Well, uh, then the, each time the matter of the planet becomes more subtle, and the way that the planet will feed itself <coughs> will be in the solar manner. Because right now, the planet exists in the lunar manner. Not all of it is solar. Even though we have the solar force coming from the very center in Spain, but everything is mechanical. In the sun, for instance, the nature that is there is solar, immortal. But because every single consciousness of that planet is doing that. Uh, he said, yeah. Yeah, it says, uh, the 13 attributes of mercy relates with Yehida, which are placed in his head oh. as Neshama. Hmm? And that's why his head is mercy, because it contains all of those attributes in potentiality. He has the possibility of developing that if we allowed him. Sounds like a sacrilege, but it's the truth. If we don't do anything, they will remain without development. Because we are here. In other words, we will say, he said, his throne is the central nervous system here in the physical body. That's his throne. And from there, he can take advantage if we remember him. That's why we have to remember God, always in that way, in order for him to walk through us. Which would allow us to ascend. Yeah. <coughs> we are very low, nefesh, part of him. If we fail, we will descend into hell, and he has to wait for us. At least a thousand years. When the lunar bodies are disintegrated and the ego disintegrated, your Ruach is waiting for you and absorb you, Psst. talk to you. You fail, let's see if you will do something in this new cycle. Go ahead, send you in. 3,000 cycles in order to do what we have to do. What? Well, he learned through suffering uh, something. He has a, a little bit of, of experience knowledge, right, which is the knowledge of hell. But it still needs to develop that because the attributes of mercy that are in his head are not developed. And that's why he has to stand again, because in order to develop that, the soul has to descend into the matter. Because the matter allows us to transform energy into matter, matter into energy. And that's precisely alchemy. And that's why it, this physical body is given to us, in order to do it. The body is already doing it. But we have to learn. Thank goodness, Master Samael Beor came and taught us how to do it. Oh yeah, it would have 3,000 experiences of hell, right? And that will give it uh, something else to that particular soul that suffered 3,000 times. Something that will be different to those that emerge for the first time, right? But uh, why to suffer 3,000 times is better to do the work and to return into the bosom of the Father as a self-realized master that understands the light, you know? 
This is only the understanding of the light. And that's why we have to understand the light in the beginning, in different levels. And this is it. Everyone? Anyway, yeah. Which ones? There were other um, races. Yeah. Which didn't take physical bodies. Yeah, well, they took. They, they took physical bodies. That all the races, the root races, were physical, but were submerged in the fourth dimension. Okay, so physical, but not. But uh, the first uh, root race, which were the polar race, mm -hmm. there were. Uh, Masters, in, in other words, they were vehicles of masters. Even the Hyperboreans as well, the Lemurians as well. In Lemuria, started the division between animals and humans. But the previous two races were individuals that were already self-realized. In other words, if all of us in this moment attain self-realization with the work that we have to do, and the planet starts another creation in, in the space, we will appear at the first, second root race. Because we already have the vehicle of the light. But all the monads that will enter there that still are not, will start uh, uh, intermingle with the human beings and eventually will eat the forbidden fruit and make the same history that this humanity has. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.